Would you like to build your dream home, your luxury custom home? And you're wondering, what is the ideal way to pay for it? Well, today we're going to dive into the information, the details of construction loans, which may be vital to the process of building your dream home. Hello, my name is Brenda Jackson. I'm your custom home specialist with Brad Moore Builders in the Hill Country of Texas. Welcome to my side of the internet, Luxury Custom Homes with Brenda. And we have a guest today. We have a specialist in the house. We have Vicki Britsky from SWBC Mortgage Corp. She's a senior loan officer that specializes in mortgages and construction loans. Welcome. Thank you, Brenda. Thanks we're so, for having me. <laughs> we're so excited to have Vicki here because it's uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about um, construction loans. So let's jump right into it. When financing custom build luxury homes, what are some key considerations that we need to consider when we're talking about construction loans? Yeah, I think the main thing is just really understanding the construction loan. There are um, different ways to go about it. You can do a one-time close or a two-time close where you would do the construction loan and then go into permanent financing at the end. And I think one of the most important things um, to me about the two-time close is the flexibility of it. You know, inevitably when the client's going through the building process, there may be some things that come up. There may be some things they want to upgrade, change, you know, kind of kind of re reconsider. And um, so in a two-time close, you would have the flexibility while going through that build to be able to do that. And then also even be able to get um, the monies into um, be, to be added into the construction loan so that when you go to permanent financing, you would be able to finance them all together. I think the key to starting out in the construction loan is really knowing about the two different loans and deciding, you know, which one's best for you. It's very important to understand that. Um, now, what happens when um, homeowners want to pay either cash, a combination of cash and, and borrowing? Mm -hmm. Um, what is the advantages and disadvantages versus paying cash up front? Okay, that's a great question. Um, you know, I have, I have a lot of clients that want to do both or, you know, possibly may want to finance as much as they can. The difference is one of the things about paying cash or putting cash up front is that when the draws are made, the money that you have put into it yourself that money will be used first. So one of the advantages is to that, that you will pay less interest through the process because the bank will use your money first to fund those draws. Um, the flip side of that is, and it really depends on each individual client's financial situation, but um, I would like to point out that I think it is very important to keep some cash through the building process as well. You know, number one, you're going to be paying interest through the process on that loan. So it's kind of nice to have, you know, a bit of an essay, if you will. And so, then also, um, like I said, if you're if you're in the middle of your build and you want to upgrade something, do something different, all of a sudden you decided you want to add a pool, you know, you kind of have um, you kind of have that cash there to work with where you're not in a bind. And then at the end, when you go to permanent financing, you can always put whatever you want into at that time. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's really good advice. And um, from having a financial background, I think, and I really believe that having that nest egg to give you some confidence that if something was to happen, that you have uh, a backup plan. So, yes, it's, it really is yeah, important. Yeah. It, it makes the building process much more enjoyable. Yes, yes, yes. So you can you know, enjoy the experience that you're going through. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome information. Now, um, now there's some own, own, homeowners that may end up having some concerns about the approval process for construction loans. Um, can you be able, are you able to shed some light and maybe give some tips on yeah. how to speed uh, that process up? Yeah, sure. Um, one thing I would say, I think it's always very important for the client to apply when they are actually, when they're first getting the design process. Mm -hmm. 
um, for many reasons. You know, if there's if there's something that's a little tricky about their financial situation, I mean, everyone's is different. We have some time to figure out, you know, how to tweak that, what to do to be able to get, you know, to where they want to be at the end of the process. And then also going through the design process, you know, they can feel more comfortable about where they're at. Um, as they're going through designing their home, they may want to go a different direction that may cost you know, um, more monies. And so just having um, that peace of mind about knowing, okay, I can do, I can go this direction if I want to. Now, what what about the, um, the credit process? So um, is it any different than a traditional mortgage uh, with the building um, for the construction? Yeah, home? okay, so that's, yeah, that's a great question. The, the pre-qualification process is, you know, exactly the same as, as a traditional mortgage. However, the thing that's different when you build is um, the banks who are providing you the interim money to, to build your house, they typically want to see, you know, like more reserves, you know, definitely, especially if, you know, if you're building a, a nice luxury home. Uh, and just really that your overall credit situation is pretty great. And so that is one thing that could be a little different from a traditional mortgage, you right? Know, a traditional mortgage could, you know, possibly be a lot easier to obtain. Right. What are some, you know, situations that people have come across when going through the building process? Yeah, I would say the biggest situation is changes that they want to make. You the know. change, the change orders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the change orders or changes they, you know, specifically want to make. Um, again. You know, I feel like the flexibility of the two-time close allows that. Um, if they wanted to get some of that money financed into the loan where at permanent they could pay off, you know, have it all together in a loan, that's very important they be able to do that as well. So, awesome. yeah. Just something just came to, to, um, to mind. The down payment for a, uh, a, a home, building a custom home, and if they have the land, um, how do you how do you calculate the down payment when you're doing a custom build? Okay, so um, the down payment amount is calculated off the appraised value. So if you're in a situation where you already own your land free and clear, you're in a great situation and possibly that could cover that down payment. On a conventional loan, the down payment requirement is 15%, where on, as a if you're a veteran, the banks loan a little more to veterans. Um, you can go up to 90 or even 95%. Now that doesn't necessarily, again, it's off the appraised value. So that doesn't necessarily mean that's a straight five, 10, 15% out of your pocket because you're allowed to use that equity um, that comes back in your appraisal. Well, thank you very much. It's been very insightful. I hope this was, was helpful for those folks that are looking at uh, building their dream home, their luxury custom home. We're gonna have Vicki's contact information uh, down below along with, with mine. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns or comments, please um, let us know. We look forward to connecting with you and we'll see you all here. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Mm -hmm.